Okay, in this video we're just going to have a look at a really budget macro option for um, MFT cameras. And the reason this kind of came about is because I had some um, product work recently where I had to take some really close up shots of something. Normally for any macro work I use the Canon EF 100mm macro f 2.8. It's for me that's that is the lens that I usually use um, and I use the focal reducer for it I'll link up into the corner actually because I've, I've done a video uh, about all of that but um, yeah in this one I, I wanted to see if I could kind of get a little bit closer so rather than using um, this macro lens instead I decided what I was going to do was to try and see if I could use a microscope lens on the camera so that's what I've got set up on he on here now um, and that's actually a C mount 100 times microscope lens. And um, yeah, it, it gave some quite interesting results. So um, because it's a C mount lens, I've had to um, obviously adapt it to fit the camera. And again, I, I did a, a video about adapting C mount lenses. So I'll link that up in the corner for you to uh, kind of take a look at if you're interested in sort of having a look at this setup. Um, and I'll also link in the description to the lens that I'm using here or the type of lens anyway and the adapter to kind of get started. So price wise it's a very affordable kind of setup to use you know the adapter is really cheap you're talking sort of ten dollars ten pounds you may already even have a c-mount adapter and then the uh, lens itself was about 30 to 40 dollars or pounds depending on kind of where you're looking but there's lots of different types of them but they're um yeah they're very kind of cheap affordable lenses so you know don't go expecting the earth from this setup but it, it can produce some very nice results so i found f for the money the actual build quality of the lens is actually quite nice it's kind of like a you know metal feeling lens there's a uh, a focus ring on it which is um you know it feels feels quite good quite a smooth focus ring it's so the build quality you know for the money i i thought was um quite acceptable really some of the points on it can be a little bit greasy so you need to be careful with um you know other accessories and things you don't want to be getting that kind of grease on on lenses or screens or anything like that but yeah overall you know for the money i, I don't think you can really go wrong with this type of lens one thing you need to be quite sort of mindful of with it is that the, um, the the actual lens itself is very delicate on this. So you need to be really, really careful with the lens on it. So, you know, if you're going to clean it, it needs to be really sort of soft cleaning. I mean, you know, normal lenses, you would obviously take care of them anyway, but this one is, is kind of that little bit more delicate. So you just need to be gentle with it. And I thought, to be honest, the image quality I thought was pretty acceptable on it you know the it wasn't as sharp as what I can get from um from my Canon lens even though that's quite an old lens but even today that lens is still you know 10 times more than this lens is worth and you know there's certainly not a 10 times quality difference so it's um yeah it it, it seemed like a very good option there's um you, you get a little bit of vignetting and crop around the image and i'll show some of the footage that i got um i'll just overlay it in a minute so you kind of know what i'm talking about but yeah there, there's you get some vignetting and some uh some cropping is kind of needed but again we went through that in that c mount video so you know you can always jump back in and have a look at that it's not particularly intensive in post, you know, that's not, not very difficult to do. And also I realised that I'm mounting this to, um, you know, a higher end kind of MFT camera. I've got the GH6 here. Um, but, you know, you can use it with um, with many other cameras. So um, I, I've actually have used it with my GH5 as well and got quite nice results. But, you know, anything um, that has really, you'd probably need 4K video on there and be able to punch in beyond that and potentially get it in HD I was punching from 5.7 to 4k to get the footage from this so just be mindful that there is a, a bit of a crop needed there so what you're shooting on you, you're not going to be able to shoot it at the highest kind of setting so once I'd shot that I thought after that maybe I'd try and get some uh, kind of macro wildlife footage because to be honest for me for personal things that's probably one of my favorite things to do so I kind of went out in here in the UK it's pretty kind of dull winter now so I tried to kind of grab the last of what was there in the garden and we, I was using uh, I managed to kind of find like a few kind of insects and caterpillars and bits like I say I'll overlay the footage so you can kind of take a look at it but I was basically I shot it all in 4k 50 um, 422 10 bit in um, all intra 
and I, to get the shots I had to have the, um, the the camera set up on a tripod because the, any type of you know shake in macro makes it incredibly difficult to, to kind of hit focus on stuff and it was quite a windy day but the light was good so I just wanted to kind of get out there and, and try it really and to be honest this lens the only option you have on there for changing is the focus here so um you basically um I'll, what i'll do actually i'll switch on you can take a quick look at uh so for this it's just like an odd piece i've just picked up from somewhere so you can kind of see hopefully if i can Pull this up. I'll need to get it into uh, put it into pixel to pixel. But just do this quickly, and then you can you'll be able to kind of see some of the. So you can see it gets kind of right into the detail there. You could probably just about see that. It kind of looks a bit hazy on there, but it's not always. So you could probably just about kind of see that it's kind of hard to show because I need to be really close to it but you get quite nice detail out of the shots but <laughs> obviously you've not got um you, you can't widen the app and uh, you can't um you, you sort of can't um get that at like any kind of non-shallow depth of field it's basically it's just locked it's always very kind of like razor thin so you find yourself you know moving the camera a lot and trying to focus a lot it can be a little bit difficult but to be honest if you've ever tried macro um, you know even photography or macro video it is incredibly challenging anyway from that point of view so it's not a you know a big con against the uh, against the lens really it was um, it just can be a little bit tricky but <laughs> to be honest at one point it like I said it was quite windy I couldn't handheld any uh, handheld anything getting a shot I did try even with like the incredible stabilization you get on these cameras it was just it was just too hard you know maybe someone with steadier hands on a less windy day could do it but I couldn't but on on a tripod I I managed to actually kind of nail a focus pull on there it, you know it wasn't amazing it was <laughs> it was a kind of usable one but after that I was, you know I felt like a bit of a boss after getting that so it's um it, it can be tricky but it, it's when you can get the right shots it, it's incredibly satisfying because you can get some really nice shots out of it and when I mentioned about the um you know the light like I say it's getting into kind of winter here and it the light is not always the best and it, you need quite a lot of light with a lens like this so um, when when you get that that kind of good light it's really good to use if you're using it indoors in a kind of studio type environment obviously you need a lot of um, a lot of light to to be on the subject otherwise you're going to struggle and you're going to have to crank up the um, the ISO really high and you know it's all just going to look a little bit grainy so um, yeah you, you need to make sure you've got quite good light with it. But overall, I found it actually a really enjoyable lens to shoot with. And to be honest, macro, like I say, is one of my favourite things to shoot personally. So, um, yeah, I, I think I was always <laughs> always going to enjoy using it. But, um, yeah, I'd be quite interested, actually, to know if um, one of the things I never kind of jumped into in MFT, even though I've been using it for years and years, I never actually got... Um, an MFT macro lens and I know there are ones out there like the 60mm macro I'd kind of be interested if there are people out there that um, you know do macro as well what kind of lenses they've got for MFT and you know which ones they kind of prefer and think are the best because um, it's something I probably will look into at some point getting a, a MFT macro lens when um, I'm slowly kind of phasing out all my other lenses so um, yeah if, if you've got anything like that kind of let me know because I'd be interested to hear and if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, there's a whole playlist about the um, Panasonic GH6 and Lumix cameras in general on this channel. And uh, please subscribe.